Hello, and welcome to Wallace's Mysteries of Antiquity. Subscribe to this series to explore with me the enigmas of our distant ancestors and try to come to tentative conclusions about them. The pyramids of Egypt are made up of thousands and thousands of largely identical stones and a few dozen special ones. Today we will be looking at one of the special stones that every single pyramid at one point had, the Pyramidium. The Pyramidium is exactly what it sounds like, a stone in the shape of a pyramid. It was the one placed on the very tip of the pyramid which brought all four enormous walls to a point. The same word is also used to describe the tops of obelisks, but for today's video we're talking about one from a pyramid, specifically the Red Pyramid of Snefru. It was discovered in 1982 by the German Archaeological Institute of Cairo, who discovered it in the rubble pile surrounding the structure. It was smashed into many pieces and had to be carefully reconstructed. The first reconstruction was vandalized sometime in the early 1990s, and then it was reconstructed in 1999 and plastered together and made presentable for tourists. This is where the Pyramidion for the Red Pyramid rests today, on a pedestal just outside of it in the Mortuary Temple. If you're familiar with the Red Pyramid, or just look carefully at the images I've been showing of it, something about the Pyramidion looks off. This is today's mystery. The angles of the Pyramidion are significantly steeper than those of the pyramid itself. How can we explain this? Let's get an obvious potential explanation out of the way first. Could the Pyramidion simply have been reconstructed or measured incorrectly? I find this to be the least likely explanation, though I do admit it is possible not all the pieces have been put back in the right place and some were even maybe unrelated. There is enough to go on to be reasonably confident that the angle is somewhere between 51 and 55 degrees. History for Granted wondered if perhaps the Red Pyramid's original design had been steeper angled, like the lower half of the Bent Pyramid. He mentioned it in passing and said there was a rabbit hole to go in there, but that was not the focus of his video. Seeing this is the focus of my video, let's poke our head into the rabbit hole and see if we can determine if plans changed during the construction of the Red Pyramid. The work gangs of ancient Egypt had a habit of writing graffiti on the backsides of stones. You hear about some famous cartouches, but there are hundreds and hundreds of them, and they allow us to determine what groups worked where and track their progress up the pyramid. Human nature doesn't change much. Take a look at these tags from various hiking trails. People have an instinctive urge to place their name and date where they've been, and the ancient Egyptians were no different. They would often write the names of the work group and the year they were working. That's why we know the time scale between placing the stones at the bottom and the stones halfway up was a mere three years, then pace slowed in proportion to the available workspace. We can also tell that the casing work was being done in conjunction with the superstructure work. Based on the dates written by the ancient builders, the entire construction lasted 10 years. That's the fastest of any pyramid, which indicates to me that there was no signs of problems or changes in plan. Pyramid building infrastructure had reached an industrial stage. Because of this incredible and seemingly unbroken pace, I see no evidence that the Red Pyramid's construction didn't go anything other than exactly to plan, at least in terms of the superstructure, and thus was never intended to have a similar angle as the Pyramidium. Its similarity to the bottom half of the nearby Bent Pyramid does beg the question. Could it have instead come from the Bent Pyramid, whose Pyramidion is also missing and never been found? I can safely say a hard no for two reasons. While the pyramids do peer very close to each other, scale is difficult to tell and these monuments are huge. The Bent Pyramid is a full kilometer from the red one. It could not roll that far and as ancient as the pyramids are, the shifting sands could likewise not possibly move a stone that far, especially since we know how wide the debris pile is for the other pyramids. Secondly, the angles only line up with the bottom part of the pyramid. The Pyramidion on top would have a totally different shape. No, it did not come from the Bent Pyramid. Another obvious question, is this really the top of the pyramid? Couldn't there have been another structure here that happened to have a pyramid on top of it? Obelisks have tops just like this, though they really didn't become popular until the next dynasty. But a smaller pyramid in a temple below a big pyramid sure does make a lot of sense. In fact, there are minor pyramids next to the Bent and Giza pyramids. 
I, however, do believe that this came from the top of the structure for a couple of reasons. Satellite pyramids had burial chambers and were still substantial structures, as you can see compared to this camel. The Pyramidion is just one stone, but mostly there isn't really even a temple here. There are some mud brick structures and the remains of a mud brick enclosure wall, but these appear to be hurried, almost as though the king had already died and everything was being moved to Giza. There is a much more complete temple in front of the Bent Pyramid, which indicates it was the one that actually mattered towards the end of Sneferu's life. Lastly, the reason I'm sure it came from the top is John Shea Pering. In the 1830s, he explored the Red Pyramid and even, like the workers before him, tagged it with his own name. In his time, he describes a Pyramidian still on top of the pyramid, and while extremely sparse, his words could very well be describing the stone we're looking at. I'll quote Pering while showing you Keith Hamilton's diagram of the configuration being described. Quote, the top of the pyramid was built entirely with Arabian stone. The apex had been formed of one block and the course below it of four others, four feet nine inches thick, but in general the courses towards the top were about two feet and those near the base of three feet in thickness. End quote. So Pering saw the true apex stone on this monument, and I see no reason that the stone we've been seeing is not the one described by Pering. Pering measured the pyramid at 99 meters tall, a full 7 meters taller than it stands today, and as you can see, the four Arabian stones are also no longer there, which Zahid Hawass attributes to stone robbers. It's sad to think that the tip of this monument stayed in place through 4,400 years of earthquakes, rain, wind, and people, only to have been destroyed in the past century and a half. This also explains the circumstances of its discovery. During a fairly routine inspection of the debris pile around the pyramid, it was just jutting out of the sand. Sand moves a lot and is constantly covering and uncovering stones, but it also causes rocks to sink. Being near the surface aligns with the idea that this particular stone has been falling off the pyramid recently. So this pyramidion really did come off of the top of the Red Pyramid. But even in Hamilton's diagrams, there is a noticeable change in slope between the four base stones and the Pyramidian. Although, he also points out, is it really noticeable? Yeah, if you're standing right next to this stone, the change in slope is quite obvious. But imagine it being at the top and you're at the bottom. Would you notice it then? We've been going down a ghost rabbit hole. The reason the angles don't match up is plainly because the angles didn't matter that far up. It was close enough. Mystery solved. Thank you for listen- wait. The Bent Pyramid's shadow is still looming over this whole thing. We still need to figure one thing out. Yeah, the angle doesn't really matter, but if you know the angle, why wouldn't you just do it right? Was it intended to poke up slightly? Maybe a religious reason? Or did something else happen? I think I already answered this question when I described the rapid construction as industrial. We know it didn't come off of the Bent Pyramid, but what if this block was originally intended for it? Here's my theory. The Pyramidion was created during the first phase of the Bent Pyramid's construction, when it was intended to have steep, straight edges. When the plans were changed and the angle flattened, a new Pyramidion was created for it, and the original one went into storage. This is where the Red Pyramid's insane timeline comes into play. By the speed of construction, the quarryman's marks, we know the Egyptians had pyramid building at an industrial level, and had already quarried a lot of the stones used in Red Pyramid's construction. That's part of how they could build it so fast. They had a stockpile of blocks and were no longer bottlenecked by the speed of quarrying. When it came time to select materials for the Red Pyramid, someone remembered they had a leftover pyramidion in stock, and they used it as is. Like I mentioned, there is plenty of evidence that the final phase of construction of the Red Pyramid was hurried. Perhaps the king had died, perhaps the economy was collapsing, but for whatever reason, near the end of the construction, the name of the game became cheap and easy. They pulled it out of storage, rested it on four large stones for stability, and called it a day. The stone then sat undisturbed, visited only by Pering, who inspected it. Then sometime after the proliferation of trucks capable of quickly getting away with the large Arabian stones, the top was pulled down, and this particular one tumbled down the side where it shattered and spewed its pieces all over the nearby sand, waiting to be discovered in 1982.
So the tip of the red pyramid got a hand-me-down left over from the bent pyramid, which is why its shape is mismatched. Thank you for listening, respectfully discuss my ideas, or post your own in the comments, and subscribe if you wish to continue to explore our ancient ancestors with me.